Sweet. Okay. Okay. Hey guys. So this is Mitch, who I can't say his last name because it's a little bit more difficult than uh, I would like to butcher. So this is Mitch with the Nightbird Foundation, and he is coming on today to talk about the Nightbird Foundation and what that is. So, Mitch, you want to go ahead and give us a uh, intro and rundown? Yeah, absolutely. So it's Marcheski is the way you pronounce okay. it, just for the record. Um, I've heard lots of different pronunciations of that. Uh, that you have. I appreciate. I, I I I would have appreciated you to just to give it a little bit of a try, just so I could laugh. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm with the Nightbird Foundation. I'm uh, and just really happy to be here. Yeah, we're happy to have you. Um, so let's start with what the Nightbird Foundation is, and like maybe work backwards to kind of who it's honoring. Um, so what is what is it? What is your goal? All those. All those, all those fun things. All, all the things. Yeah, for sure. So the Nightbird Foundation is a five. Well, we're a five hundred one c three, and uh, we exist to bring hope and healing to women with breast cancer. And we were founded in two thousand twenty two after my little sister Jane passed away, um, with her uh, after a long battle um, with breast cancer. She passed away at thirty one. Uh, she was diagnosed in her twenties with that. So she fought a long, you know, a long battle, and. Mm -hmm. uh, and ended up ended up passing away but we realized you know in in the wake of her passing that you know she left the world um uh an audition uh quotes music lyrics blog posts essays all she left behind a lot of hope and encouragement mm -hmm. all of those things and yeah. we had realized that you know we we really can't let this just die with her mm -hmm. you know? so for us yeah. it was important to take the hope that she had, to take the inspiration that she brought, the encouragement um, that she gave, and be able to spread that out into the world to people that, that didn't have it and don't have it currently. Yeah. Um, what, how old was she, how old was she when she got diagnosed the first time? So she was diagnosed, I believe it was like the back half of her 27th year. Yeah. Okay. It was, in so it was a 27, maybe 28. Okay. I can't remember like the exact. She was born yeah, in December, no. but, like it's it was one of the, it was like in that mix when we had gotten the news. Yeah. Uh, diagnosed and um but it was late 20s. Okay. And that's weird like we talked um last time I chatted that it's it's weird for me cuz you know I've always heard 40 is kind of when you start looking for those things and she was well before her 40s and she passed from you know a, something that you get when you're 40 um in her early 30s and so it's kind of it's it still is kind of shaking my whole like what am I supposed to do like how do you catch those things so early when the program is designed to be 40 and up yeah that's a, it's it is really difficult to navigate and you know one of the things that we hope to do as well it's not a main focus but it's definitely yeah. something that the Nightbird Foundation tries to do is is raise awareness around you know the prevalence of breast cancer or at least the potential of it you know in young women yeah and uh yeah. so we're you know, we live in uh, in ohio is where we're from and um the town that we grew up in they have a program where uh, one of the local it's actually a local furniture store they they sponsor uh mammograms for women under 40 that are not covered under insurance you know for this Perfect. exact reason yeah have the yeah that we have is that you know apparently insurance companies don't think that it's possible for you to get it that early yeah but i'm like man it obviously it is um so what kind of how did nightbird become the name i know that was what her, she went by right yeah yeah so in she tells okay, this so. story a lot, she tells the story a lot better than me so we'll uh we'll leave it at that you can you can google it or listen okay. to it but uh, basically, she had it was during one of her cure cancer treatment uh, times that she was she was at home and she was having trouble sleeping, mm -hmm. um, fall asleep, wake up, fall asleep, wake up, and she kept on having this dream of these birds singing outside of her window at mm -hmm. night, and then she would wake up and they wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't be singing. This happened mm -hmm. two or three, I think, and then I think it was it was like the third time or the fourth time she woke up and there were there were actually birds singing outside of her window, oh. and the realization you know, of it, of the realization hit her that 
these birds were singing as if the dawn had appeared, um, even though ever the even though it was still dark outside. Yeah, you know, wow. so the, that you know these birds were singing in anticipation of the dawn that they haven't seen yet because they knew it was coming, and so she, she really der- derove, derived derived. Yeah, she pulled yeah whatever she pulled <laughs> she she took that that like experience that she had and she turned it into the name Nightbird. Yeah, one well, knowing her story and knowing that. You know, we chatted and she was going to win either way. Um, and her dawn was going to come. And so that was really sweet that they were singing in anticipation for the dawn, um, even though it wasn't there yet. So that's very sweet. I'm going to, at some point, we're going to watch the clip and I'm going to try really hard not to cry because it is like. <laughs> I, it gets you. Yeah, it always. And I told you, my daughter will be like three times a month. She just loves. Jane, she loves Nightbird, but she loves her music and stuff. So, um, okay, so who is Jane? So Jane is, uh, man, that's a big question. Uh, so Jane was, <laughs> honey, I am on a call. Right now. Don't want you. This, is, this is my daughter, Magnolia Jane. Oh. Hey, hi. Hi. <laughs> so did Jane get to meet all your kiddos? She did. She did not okay. get to meet Liberty, who's my one year old. Okay. So she, but she did get to meet yeah. Mitchell. Mitch, so I have four: Mitchell is six and a half, Jude is five, and Magnolia is three, and Lynn Liberty is okay. just one. Um, so we actually got to. It was really, a, really very sweet. Um, it was the Christmas of 2021. Mm-hmm. We flew. Everybody, so she was living in Southern California. So we flew yeah. my whole family out and we spent two, we got to spend two weeks with her. We spent Christmas day through the mm-hmm. new year. Um, oh, with Jane that's amazing. Open all the presents with the kids and oh. all of that. And then Jane ended up passing away. Um, I think it was almost, it was probably six, six or seven weeks later. Um, oh, so we, you know, we had the opportunity to like have some really good quality time, yeah. you know, with yeah. her and also like, you know, the kids are little, but I'm hoping that they can retain at least some of those memories of actually yeah. her and seeing her. And we watch the videos often of them being. That's sweet that you got to record all that. And that they, that's their memory that they have with her is, isn't a hospice. Yeah. And it was really nice to be able to have that. Um, yeah, just to have that piece, those memories of my kids being able to spend time with her and yeah, and all of that. Um, but yeah, they got they got to meet her. I think Mitchell uh, Mitchell got to spend more time with her, and he's older. Yeah. But I took him on a couple solo trips to California, just me and him, or me and him and my wife Brooke. So he yeah. has memories of yeah um, for the first time with her. Like he'd never been to the beach before, so he got to go with her. Oh, the Pacific. that's sweet. Cool. Um, anyways, I'm digressing, but no, so you're fine. The question of who Jane was is, you know, Jane was like, first and foremost, I think she was just, she's obviously like a follower of Jesus. I think she, I would just, I would say that, you know, like her faith yeah. was a core piece of who she was. And, and it really does, does inform once you, I think you understand that, especially as a Christian, like once mm-hmm. you understand that was her framework, it, it makes a lot of sense, mm-hmm. like how she was able to approach the world as she yes. did. You know, um, what being so hopeful in the, you know, really in the face of death uh, makes it makes sense for, you know, for the Christian uh, because of the hope that we have, um, yeah. you know, Christ. And so, you know, that element of it, obviously, being the core of who she was. But, you know, like in my mind, she's just still my little sister. Like we grew up best friends, you know, mm-hmm. it's yeah. And it was just like she was always she would get she would get kind of grumpy about it. But like we. And we joke about it that, you know, March, we Marcheskis are easy to please, but hard to impress. And that was, <laughs> that was like something that Jane and I joked about a lot, but she didn't like yeah. it when it, it applied to her. You know, she yeah. wanted, you wanted me to be impressed by whatever her. she, you know yes. what I mean? And there was, it was a, uh, it was a high bar, you know, and, and it went both ways. Like when yeah. I did, she was like, okay. Oh, great. Good. Sweet. Good job, Mitch. Yeah. Let's go get something to eat. That's you funny. Know? Um, yes yeah so was she older my, or younger, younger. yeah younger. She was, okay 
Yeah. So she's, and we grew up sort of really attached to the hip. We were mm-hmm. 20, 20 months apart. And, um, and like, we just did everything together. Like we sang in church together. We drove to school together. We did sports together. Like mm-hmm. everything was, was, you know, Mitch and Jane. Yeah. Um, we're together in that. Yeah. So she sang at y'all's church growing up. Yeah. So she's always been a singer. Always been a singer. Yeah. Mom was okay. a choir. Mom helped the choir. I don't think she wasn't the director, but she was like the, one of the assistant directors of the choir. Okay. Growing up. So we grew, I mean, gosh, we grew up in, you know, roaming the halls of the church, you know, barefoot anytime the, you know, anytime the doors are open. That is. We're there. You know? uh, we'll see people out at church, you know, out of church and they'll be like, oh, these are your kids. I see them running around all the time. I'm like, yeah, they probably also don't have shoes on when you see them. But, you know, volunteer kids are, they hang with the pastor's kids, so. They do. It is what it is. They, they, yeah, they think that, uh, yeah, my kids definitely think that they own the place. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, and I'm like, no. Or yeah. whatever. Always think that's funny. Um, okay, do you want to play her video? Do you kind of want to explain what this video is? I think people, yeah. like I've told you, I didn't watch America's Got Talent. And it just, like, popped up. And I'm, like, the kind of person who likes to see people win. And so golden buzzers always get me. So I was like, oh, sure. Like, I'll click it. And then I rabbit holed into Nightbird. And then uh, one of her songs came up on Spotify, like, six or seven months ago. And I was like, I remember this. And I watched the thing again. And it, I rabbit holed again and found out that she'd passed away and all the stuff. Um, so do you kind of want to tell her audition story? Yeah, absolutely. So Jane was, uh, she was obviously, she was on America's Got Talent. Uh, it was in 2021. And she was, um, yeah, she was, I'm trying to even think of where to start on the story because it was an, an interesting one in the sense that, you know, she went in for the audition. I don't think really knowing whether or not she was going to do well, you know. Um, yeah. And uh, my brother, was he dropped her off the audition this is a funny like you'll see it in the clip where it says she says i'm here by myself which i i wondered that because i was like (laughs) was she all alone she was not all alone she made it sound like it and it was like a good so like every time we every time we watch it we're like oh whatever so andrew my (laughs) brother dropped her off there okay he only dropped her off there because he is the introvert of introverts and he does not want want to hang Mm-hmm. He didn't want to interviews. He didn't want to be there all day. So he was like, you do. And it was the same thing. Like, Marteskis are easy to please, hard to impress. Like, he was just like, not, he was like, okay, you're doing something cool. That's fun. I'm going to go do, Yeah. I'm going to go live, like, I'm going to go to a coffee shop and do what I'm going to do. Like yes. He, yes. So he dropped her off. He was the one who was taking care of her there in California. Um, yeah. He'd move there full time to be with her and to hang out with her and to like take, yeah. take her to appointments and give her a medicine. Yes. Yeah. But he just, wasn't going. He would, you know, he would do an he like he would do injections, but he he wouldn't go to America's Got Talent. That's like the type of person that, that he is. I'll do I'll do the grossest medical oh. thing you need me to do at two a.m. But I'm not hanging out with you at I, America's Got Talent. I, I'm not gonna go hang out with her. You again. know what though? I have an introvert husband, and I can like. They're like your ride or dies, but they're not actually going to go with you where you're going. Totally. Yeah. They're the, he's the true, if there's anybody, I know this interviews all over the place, but like, if there's anybody who's the true like hero in the story, like it's Andrew, you know, he, my, yeah. he's like, he's in his twenties, like, and he like 20 single working and like yeah. when they needed somebody to take care of her, you know, he like, he moved from Ohio to California and. It's amazing. Like he worked remotely until he couldn't re- work remotely anymore, and then quit his job and took care of her full time, and you know, literally until the end. So he wow. he's the guy. Like if there's anybody yeah. who's, who's the hero in the story, it's him. And you know, he's. Well, I imagine. Didn't want to go. You know. To... <laughs> I imagine like if her core beliefs were just like one of the core things about Jane was that she was a she, like she followed Christ that isn't something that she just picked up randomly. That's something that was instilled in your family. And so when he saw a need he could meet, I imagine it was a very obvious, yeah, much like you taking over the foundation. It was a very obvious. Yes. Yeah, for sure. For, you. for sure. 
Oh, wow. And, and, you know, and it was, it was really just instilled in us, not only, you know, like, I don't know how to I even say this, like from the, from the faith perspective and from the family perspective, like, mm-hmm. which obviously one informs the other, you know, mm-hmm. like we, we live our lives in such a way that we're, tr- we try to be others as other centered and as possible mm-hmm. in the way mm-hmm. that we are. And so when we have, when people are in need around us, especially people that are really close to us and in our family, like, it's just not even a question of whether yeah. or not to step up to the plate um, and go for it. Yeah. And, you know, I never thought that I would be running a nonprofit. You know, if you'd asked me two years yeah. ago, I would have said, no, thank you. That's not my, <laughs> not in my skill set, not in my interest level. Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you. And, you know, and here we are. And here you are. Because, yeah. you know, we just, we know that there are things that need to be done. And, and I think the other side of it too, mm-hmm. and you even see this with Jane, like the other side of it too is we, you know, we firmly and truly believe that our lives are really not our own at the end of the day, you mm-hmm. know, like we've been given mm-hmm. we gifts to, to steward, you know, and mm-hmm. like that includes like what we do with our lives and our time and our energy and our, our efforts, uh, not just our skills. So, you know, when, you know, when the Lord calls, called Andrew to go take care of Jane, you know, he had a choice to be selfish or not, but like, mm-hmm. because his faith informed the way that he views the world, he realized that like, you know, loving and caring for other people and dying to himself is really going to be the most beneficial thing for him, for him, you know, yeah. whether, whether was, or not you see it. It probably was beneficial to Jane. It was probably super beneficial to him as well. Totally. And it's the same thing with me. Like I didn't want to do this and I, you know, some days I still don't want to do this, but <laughs> you know, there are, but the, this has been some, one of the more meaningful experiences for me to be able to take Jane's legacy and the hope that she had mm-hmm. and to, to bring it to people that don't have it, you know, and yeah. when I would rather just work a nine to five job and, you know, raise my yeah. kids and take them to soccer and, you know, serve in my church and be just like a normal guy, you know, the Lord yeah. called something else. And, and because of the, of the faith that, the, you know, that obviously that has been given to us by God, but also that it was instilled in us and our parent by our parents, like, you know, the idea that we would, and Andrew would move across the country or that I would pick this up or that my sister you know, would, would go into nursing and be a nurse, like, and my parents would be doing what they're doing. It's all, it's all rooted in the faith that we have, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And did you tell me, you don't just have one nurse in your family. You have a, someone, is Andrew in school to be a nurse as well since this? Yeah. So, and, yeah. So Andrew is um, in school to be a nurse. So he should graduate at the end of this year. Um, and my sister, Caitlin, is currently a nurse. That's amazing. Um, and both of them really found inspiration, you know, in Jane's journey and in the nurses and the healthcare professionals that took care of, yeah, that took care of Jane throughout. throughout That's amazing. The okay. So she was back to the original context of this whole um, part. Jane was not completely alone at the uh, audition. She wasn't alone in LA. She was um, just dropped off at the audition. I love it. We homeschool, uh, and this I is have, just like it's too nice to be inside. It's too no, nice. I know it. I, sh- and, I should have just gone outside and just realized they were going to make their way outside. Yeah. Um, so well, so from so Jane was not dress dropped off in America. Jane was dropped off in America's Got Talent by herself, but she was not like uh, not taken care of by her family. Yeah. Um, yes. So when she walked into that audition, I don't think she really knew what was going to happen or whether she would go very far. I think that, but I think that she knew she was conf- she was confident enough to know that she knew that she wanted to sing one of her original songs, and that you know she mm-hmm. was again she wasn't going to be really you know impressed by or intimidated by the judges or by the whole stage, you know. Yeah. And that's which, amazing. Watch the you know the golden buzzer. Um, audition i think that you know you can see that in her and then you also like you can see the undertones of her faith come through you know mm-hmm. even, as, even as she's going through it so what i'll do is i'll let me just show it real quick and we'll yeah, watch absolutely. it absolutely got about it in a minute perfect good old technology because i don't know how to do this <laughs> but I'm, i don't think i can mute myself i don't need to, i can't all right can you hear that okay uh, well, it's not playing yet. Here. Oh, I can't hear it at all yet. 
You can't hear it at all. Okay, so it's it's not going through then. Maybe we can't do this. Okay. Because I'm getting the I'm getting you're the, getting it. Oh. Okay. But not. I don't think it's going through. Anyways, watch the. Everybody watch the audition. <laughs> yes. Yes. True. Um, like really watch it. Um. It is, and I think it's just Nightbird Golden Buzzer, and it should pop up that one that you just saw. There's not a lot of them, is there? No, 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 no. There's only one. So if you Google that, um, and just so if you haven't seen the audition, I guess I'll just explain it to you because it's going to yeah. be just a thing. Um, so Jane sang an original song, and uh, I think the, really, and Simon Cowell, um, who's not known for his soft and warm heart, um, was really moved and impacted by Jane's story, by her song, by her mindset and her attitude as she was walking mm -hmm. even onto the stage. And, and he, he gave her a golden buzzer, which sort of propels you to the finals uh, in the show itself. So you would, so she didn't have to come back and do different auditions to try to make it all the way through. Um, and what's significant about it is, you know, Simon doesn't just hand those out mm -hmm. not very often. Uh, so Jane being, you know, being able to, to get that from him, I think was, was really telling. And then, you know, even her walking away from that audition, a lot of people grabbed a hold of some of the quotes that she had in that. Some of, the, mm -hmm. and you know, one the biggest one that people are really grabbed a hold of were, was she said, "You don't have to wait until life isn't hard anymore before you decide to be happy." Mm -hmm. And what in in and at its core, you know, it's it's just the sentiment and the idea that our circumstances don't have to define our response to yeah. the world. You know. Yeah. Because if you're waiting for the per perfect moment to like choose joy and to make the right decisions and to get life together or whatever, you, whatever it is, yeah. like it's not going to come. That moment does not exist. And no. you're, you're going you're gonna to die waiting for it. And, you know, she wasn't about to die waiting for her moment to, to make a decision to do something great. Yeah. Um, so I did have a question. I think I've just always been curious. So I went to school with a girl who um, had bone marrow cancer and so it's obviously not like also apples but she won homecoming queen the year that they basically told her like you're terminal she had lost her arm she had lost a leg she was a soccer player so it was like really kind of a catastrophic year for her she won homecoming queen and she was mad that she had won because she kind of was like it was a pity win um did jane have that same like I mean, I think she was talented enough to get the golden buzzer, and I think her song is good enough. Mm -hmm. But did she kind of have that same, like, almost, like, duality of emotions? Like, she's talked about before, like, it's good and it's bad at the same time. Um, you know what? I don't think she felt that way about it. I think because she was confident enough in knowing that they don't just yeah. hand buzzers for sad stories. No, I don't no. think they do. I Yeah. Yeah. And also, you know, like it's, it's objectively good. Like and yeah. the song is objectively good. Her voice is objectively good. I mean, it's yeah. evident the fact that people are still yeah. doubting it and listening to it yep. and her albums and buying her vinyl. Like, like if it yeah. was, if it was just a sob story, we wouldn't be selling anything. No. And the well, and I mean, the whole crowd booed Simon when he said, I'm not going to give you, I'm, I'm not going to give you a yes, which always makes me laugh. I mean, there was, my son said, why is that guy booing so loud? Because I guess someone was like scream booing at him. Uh, and it always makes me laugh because, you know, then he gives her the golden buzzer and it like yeah, yeah, yeah. does this whole thing. But I'm like, it's because she's good, dude. And people were mad that he wasn't even going to give her a yes. And, you know, we know he's going to give her something better. But yeah, yeah, in that yeah. moment, the people were like, are you kidding? So it was, you know, it was measurably good that everyone there was like dude are you serious totally and you know i think that she felt she definitely felt that way um and uh like yeah she was calm i think she was confident enough to know like okay i did i did well I did yeah and i think i know then again i not, it's not it's not to say that she wasn't like <clears throat> she's been surprised or like blown away by the fact that simon cow gave her a gold buzzer so like yeah definitely that balance of i think she knew she was she was like okay i know i'm good enough to at least advance this show mm -hmm. but not good enough for simon to like smack that golden buzzer and push yeah on. yeah and that was that was crazy um to see so at that point 
had she, because she talked about the, she says the last I heard or the last I checked, and she mentioned um, multiple major organs that had cancer had spread to it. Um, at that point, had she quit? Had she just kind of like, I'm just going to move forward and live my life and enjoy it? Or kind of what was her cancer journey like, you know? Yeah. So, so she was still, she was still pursuing treatment at that point. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. So she was given, so just I'll, I'll zoom out a little, even a little further. So in 2020, 2020, it was like late mm-hmm. 20, early 2020, she was given six months to live by her doctors in Nashville. That was the, that was the prognosis, the diagnosis for her. And we, at that point, you know, because Jane is, you know, both stubborn and wonderful all at the same time, like she wasn't about to take that as like the, you know, she wasn't going to just say, well, you've given me this time. So I'm just going to go ahead and accept it. So we, that was when we made a transition to a clinic in Southern California, which allowed, which, you know, allowed her to live, um, you know, a little over two, almost two and a half years longer than what the the doctors had originally said. Wow. And a lot That's of That's a lot longer. A lot longer. And, you know, some of it was, you know, her mind, like, obviously mindset and attitude is like a mm-hmm. huge piece of that. You know, you can't, obviously you can't wish your way into surviving terminal cancer, no. but it's a big piece. Uh, but, you know, the secondary piece of it too was, you know, her treatments were just a lot more targeted at this particular clinic than they were okay. before. And so she was, she was, you know, she was partnering a lot of immunotherapies alongside of her traditional chemotherapies um, and with some more targeted chemotherapy drugs. So yeah, she was still, that. she was still like getting treatment. She was still like pursuing health, you know, and even until the day that she died, she was like still talking about what she was going to do next week and the book that she was going to release and the CDs that she was going to put out and the, you know, the, the stuff that she was going to do with Simon, you know, when she gets better, like she That's never, amazing. Really, never really hit this moment of like, okay, this is the end. Mm-hmm. So you, got, you know, she was yeah. doing vocal exercises and stuff with mom, like during the day. And then she, before she, she passed away, you know, at night in her, in her sleep. So it was like, it was not this like slow decline hospice situation where they go into a coma and they yeah. just come out. Like she was vibrant, you know, up until the very end. Man, that's, that's, uh, man, I know hospice is hard and those like slow transitions are hard, but I feel like that's, was probably a pretty hard thing to wake up to, you know, the next morning when it was like, oh, oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, it's so, it's like so unexpected, you know, um, but I'm going to pull up, uh, I don't have, uh, yeah, I don't have the, um. I don't have the book with me, but Jane wrote a poem. I was gonna say, she, yeah, you said a book, and I feel like we we talked that she's got a poetry thing. That y'all are y'all releasing her poetry? Yeah, so it's already on pre. It's already open for pre order right now uh, on the website. Okay. So if you go to okay. nightbird.org, you can find it. But um, I'm trying to pull up a a poem right now, just only because I, we're, since we're talking about Jane um, passing away, there was a yeah. there was a very specific poem that I remember her um writing and it was I just do not know this is not like the the actual manuscript Uh, (laughs) where is it yeah um, was she always a creative or did she kind of okay yeah she was always that like um she was always just like really creative and like whimsical and she was i mean don't get me wrong she was like she was also very like she had a business mind she was very good marketing as you can see even just from like the way that she put everything together her songs and yeah all the things but um but she had written a poem that was sort of like uh almost prophetic in in a way about about her dad and it was um really interesting to me that you know she was even um this aware even of like what she wanted to like even how you know she wanted to die oh dang um 
I mean, I if I'm getting get to choose, it's going to be in my sleep. Yeah. After like the greatest day of my life, but yeah, you know, we don't get to make those choices. Totally. Why is this not? I guess it. I just I'm just like not finding it. Anyways, the I'll I'll share it with you so you can okay, see. Okay. Perfect. One, um, but the uh, when she was talk when she was. Even she wrote this poem, and I've had it. I had it on the back of. I'm sorry, I don't have this with me. And I'm not. Okay. Um, but it was it was sort of uh, along the lines of like, if I were to die, like I don't want to die under fluorescent lights and sterile air and you know things hooked up to me. Yeah. But like, like I want to die in the light of the sun with the, you know, with the breeze and like it was very obviously very poetic. Yeah. And and one of the, you know, when I was sitting in the hospital with her. You know, it was a week before she passed away. Um, you know, she was she was in really rough shape. And I remember praying a lot of prayers during that time. And I remember, like, you know, we obviously pray for healing, um, yeah. you know, and all of those things. But there was there was also this prayer that I just consistently prayed that, you know, like, that she wouldn't die in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Like, that, that it wouldn't be here, you know, yeah. with just me and her, you know. Yeah. And, um so in like praying that and praying that and praying that, you know, like my prayer started shifting away from just heal her to like, just don't let her die here. Yeah. And, you know, and then they released, they actually, they released us in the hospital a couple of days later and she was able to get home and, um, and, you know, and then she ends up being able to die, you know, surround, like surrounded by her family, like the family's in the house. She's, in she's in southern california her her apartment had a view of the ocean like she she died mm -hmm. in like picturesque beautiful space that she probably could have ever done and like and the reason i share that is like what jane's story is is really at it at its core i think a story of like god's faithfulness you know mm -hmm. and and i even see it even in my own life when i when i think through because i ask these questions a lot of of, of the lord like why you know why didn't you answer my prayers like why didn't you answer my prayers as a mm. healer like why didn't you answer my prayers you know and the lord is just really like kind and gentle and faithful to remind me that you know like he did like he did and he like he answered the prayer of her not dying in the hospital like mm. even in 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 even in the way that you know like she wanted to spend her entire like she spent her entire life wanting to make an impact with her music in the world like that was just her life when someone since she was since she was a kid she wanted to write music that would move people and that would inspire people and that she would be able to make a, a big difference in the world using her music mm -hmm. and you know as you know her cancer diagnosis hit as her marital problems hit as her inability to even be able to sing like because through her cancer journey hit there was a lot of discouragement that she walked through of like you know like god why are you stealing this dream from me you know, mm. why, like, why am I not able to do this? Why aren't you answering my prayers? And like, just the, just even the fact that she was a no name artist from Nashville with cancer to her being able to walk on that show, sing one of her songs and legitimately change the world with it is, is a testament of God's faithfulness of giving yeah. her that she had before she died. Like, yeah. Being able to, you know, being yeah. able to or what she wanted their entire life, you know, he was gracious enough to give it to her and, and not only to give it, give her the dream, but also to remind her that of the love and the faithfulness that he had towards her, you know, yeah. because sure she walked on that stage, like sure. She wrote the song. Sure. She said all the words, but you know, I truly think, you know, it was God that orchestrated, you know, the movement that came along with it, you yeah. know, it, it, to the point that we're even talking today, like, I know you reached out, because you watched an audition that you have a show that you don't watch all the time, you know, because you were moved by it. Yeah. And like, I think that's, I really think that that's just a testament to, you know, God's faithfulness in Jane's life and in my life and in the lives of those, um, those to come. Yeah. When you said she wanted to change the world and, you know, like that's a, I think when people want to change things, usually we start with like the world and then we kind of realize our impact and, um, did though because i've watched because i've watched that golden buzzer 
video enough times I've actually got um, and there's a group out of I don't know where in Africa yeah. but there's a group yeah. out of Africa who performed her song and you know but they put their own music like their own flair to it and it's still just as beautiful and it it hit Simon because I think she had passed at that point mm-hmm. and so it, she did change the world she affected an entire group of women in Africa without ever meeting them and it's like that's you don't just do that yeah like yeah. You, you just don't, don't. You don't. <laughs> so it's yeah that one that one gets me but hers really gets me but it's like she wanted to change the world and she got to she just didn't get to see her impact mm-hmm. here while she's here i think that you know i think she knows what's happening yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so too. And I think she saw a little bit of it, you know, in the la- in her last months, you know, like just being able to experience all the outpouring of like affection and love from mm-hmm. the talent family. Like when she had to drop out of the show, you know, because of her her condition was getting worse. Like she was still getting like notes and emails and gifts, and you know, people, that. she was able to actually see just a sliver, I think, of, of yeah. the impact had. And um, we, we actually, I had the opportunity, me and Andrew and Caitlin had the opportunity to go to the America's Got Talent live shows a handful of weeks ago and actually meet the choir that performed that. Um, oh, that's that amazing. Re- and, like, I was blown away by just how, again, how this group of people from literally the other side of the world was yeah. inspired enough by Jane's song and her her music and her attitude and her faith to be able to go do something great and just that alone is is just an amazing thing if you think about it you know yeah yeah so, so much yeah, so yeah. that sure. gosh, they they put together her song and they went on the show and they got a golden buzzer and then they went to the finals and they didn't win but the next day they performed with Coldplay like in in San Diego, so like that's insane. You've got this group of people that were just like they were just a choir in South Africa, just yeah, a thing. And then you know they're playing with one of the best bands in the world, you know. And it's because it's because the Lord was faithful to you know to to give Jane what she what her heart desired in that you know, mm-hmm. and and to show that love to her you know not just for her but because yeah. she because the Lord knew that it was going to impact a lot of lives. Yeah, I was just about to say, I don't, you know, and I don't think it's, because there's this idea that, like, the Lord gives you your heart's desire, not what you're saying, but, you know, in the big umbrella of life is, like, oh, he'll give you your heart's desires. Well, if your heart's desires are lined up with him, then, yeah. But, like, if you're like, oh, I'm a millionaire, everyone wants to be a millionaire. Like, that's not really a, that's not something God can use. Um, t- like, her t- heart's t- desire was to change the world. Totally. For him. Um, and like we talked last week, you know, knowing that her marriage at a point that it was broken, um, that she was sick, she had 2% chance to live. Um, and I've shared her songs and I've shared her album and I've shared her story with people who are suicidal, people who have depression, people who are questioning God, people who are having a bad day. Like her hope, that hope that she had in the Lord transcends just her breast cancer it is it was her whole embodiment of christ's hope mm-hmm. so i yeah. think that's i think that's something that's it always blows me because it's like i knew she had cancer because you know like i rabbit hold um when then you told me she had breast cancer and that like blew me out like blew my mind but at that point i would have just i don't know would have just assumed that she might have just had like some mental like anxiety or depression issues because her song isn't about cancer it's about it's okay like you know so i like that her songs transcend um her current condition and they're applicable to the grand scheme of struggles totally and i mean you know i and i see that even in just the way the people that i interact with now um where i have people that you know are I think I told you, like, I've got, like, a 10-year-old girl up in yeah. New York who's, like, putting on bake sales and stuff like that, you know, to, uh, oh, what happened, man? 
Oh, pumpkin. Get your, you get your chin. It's okay. You can play something. Um, and like she's putting on bake sales, you know, for the stuff. because she was being bullied at school and it was something that she, I'm sure. And she, you know, found a lot of hope in that song. Like it yeah. was an encouragement to her, you know? And then, you know, you have people that are literally on death's door with metastatic breast cancer and, you know, they're singing the songs and wearing the beanies and drinking out of the cups because they, you know, they still want to find hope and encouragement in mm-hmm. their last days. Yeah. You know? And I think the even just the breadth of um, just the types of people that need a message like that, mm-hmm. it isn't just like, it isn't just cancer, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I think that's the struggle for us at the Nightbird Foundation is like, we'd like, we'd like for, to be able to help everybody. And we'd yeah. like to be able to do it all, you know, but it's just a resources thing. Like yeah. Jane's message can go to anybody anywhere. And I think be able to make a really big impact. But, you know, for us, we've really focused in on, you know, on women with cancer, just for that same, just from a resource perspective, but I'd love to get to a point, you know, where we're doing it, we're yeah. doing anti-bullying campaigns and we're helping with suicide, you know, prevention month and we're helping in mental health awareness spaces, you know, like, I think that would be really good. Yeah. I think that's the the ability, like having that big vision, um, but also knowing, you know, where to start. And so you kind of talked about like the beanie in the cup and the, um, what else did you say? So we have a book, book, CD, cup, and we throw some, you know, we'll throw a beanie in there and we'll throw, uh, we've, we've experimented with different types of things, okay. but those are yeah. the things. Okay. And so what are they, what, what is it kind of, what is Nightmare doing in the breast cancer space currently? And how can we listeners or people who are, you know, tired of listening to me talk about Nightbird Foundation on my Instagram reels are like, whatever, I'm just going to just do it to shut her up. Um, what, what is the money going towards kind of who is it helping and how can we help? Yeah, so we do a handful of things, but the the main thing that we do is we give gifts of hope to women that are going through cancer. Um, okay. Sort of focus in on breast cancer, but it's not limited to breast cancer. Um, okay. And for the re- reasons we talked about, like there are people sitting in chemo chairs like right now that are discouraged. Mm-hmm. They've lost hope. They don't have a family support. They don't have a church support system. Maybe they're maybe they're just having a really down day, and they do have those things. You know, we we mm-hmm. want to be take uh, the message of hope that, that Jane had and be able to get it into the hands of people that need it. Um, so we, we have a gift of hope program, which distributes gifts of hope uh, through a nomination process and through also through cancer clinics. Um, okay. So when you, so when you donate to the Nightbird Foundation, it's a hundred dollars to sponsor a woman uh, with a gift of hope. And that's, you know, that's putting it together. That's packaging it. That's shipping it. That's getting it delivered. That's all those things um, included in that. And uh, and a portion of that also goes towards grants towards Mm -hmm. uh, women that have breast cancer. And the purpose behind that is, you know, Jane, Jane had a lot of treatments that were not standard of care for her insurance company. And she was able to have those because we had a GoFundMe put set up and people generously donated to be able to help cover some of those immunotherapies and and other um, more experimental type treatments that. Uh, that she needed to survive Mm -hmm. in her life. And we wanted to take that same generosity that was given to Jane and pass it on to other women that are in similar situations. So a portion of a gift of hope sponsorship goes towards uh, funding grants uh, for young women with breast cancer in that integrative medicine space. Because there's plenty, there are plenty of other places that, that do grants for helping hit your deductible and Mm -hmm. and gas and all of that. And they're wonderful. And we, we, we resource women with those uh, those nonprofits as well through our Gifts of Hope. But uh, the grant making type side of things for us is really, really rooted in that where, you know, we want to give hope to women that need it, but we also want to help them heal uh, physically as well. So that's a, that's a piece of it that does. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's the healing piece. Because you said that and I was like, I need to ask about the healing. Yeah. And that's the Immuno Integrative Medicine Grant. Correct. And okay. yeah, and again, it's not we're not, we're we're not focusing on that because we don't believe traditional medicine works. We're just we focus in on that because part of Jane's story was 
her ability to get some treatments that her insurance wasn't like they weren't willing to cover, you know, yeah. for reason. And, yeah. you know, not that the, not to throw any shade on them. It's just, that's the, the reality of the situation for yeah. us. And, and when we, it gave her, yeah, it gave her two and a half extra years, right? It did. It really did. Yeah. So even, you know, from that side of things that just the ability to pair some, some like immunotherapies alongside of traditional therapies, I think really does wonders, I think in the cancer yeah. space. I mean, I'm not a doctor, so. I'm yeah. Yeah. Experience. But um, I would say from experience, it's good. Um, what, keep hitting my computer. Yeah. What, um, what is the nomination process? So like I have, I'm in Texas. You know, there's people in California who know about Nightbird Foundation. You guys are in Ohio. So what is the, um, like if we nominated someone in Texas or mm -hmm. Vermont or Washington State or whatever, um, Germany, I know you said you've got someone in Germany, um, you send these gifts of hope to them, correct? Correct. Okay. So, And then yeah. do you have a distribution with like a local cancer facility that you guys just have stock there where the women come in and they have gifts of hope available to them um we have a, so we have we do so both of those things are true so yes yeah, so you can go okay. onto our site and there's a gifts of hope tab and you can sponsor a woman that way you can write your own mm -hmm. personal note um you can do that anonymously like you can just sponsor a woman that just okay. generic for if you don't have anybody in mind um but you can also sponsor you know somebody as well that's that you're close with and there's a nomination form there so you okay. click on it it's very simple it's like their name name they're like name phone number address mm -hmm. address so we can get so we can like make sure that we can deliver it to them yes. um and allow a little space for that for you to tell their story as well so a little more context uh, for why yes. they're getting it and then okay. just contact info of the person that's nominating as well so if we need to follow up um or whatever and really what we like, what's, what's fun about the ones, the nominations is because of, <clears throat> excuse me, because it's not going through like a cancer clinic, mm -hmm. um, you know, we can write really specific notes to those women, you know, nice. to throw boxes. So with yeah. the cancer clinics, you know, with HIPAA privacy concerns and stuff, you don't know exactly what those women's names are or what they're going through specifically just because of the privacy issues there. Um, so we do write more generic notes that go to them. Again, just because they're generic doesn't mean they're not meaningful necessarily. It's just, yeah, we, yeah. You know, I can't say, hey, Julie, yeah. you know, like we're praying for you and your family and your kids, like, because we don't know. But when people nominate, I don't know if it's, yeah. Yeah. When people nominate, we can actually say, hey, you know, like, like, like we don't know each other, but, you know, Leslie, you know, nominated you to receive this gift of hope because, you know, we, we know that you're really walking through a tough time now, right now with your cancer. And we'd love to bless you in that. And so we, we write a note for those to go inside of the, those gifts of hope. Uh, and you can do that through the website. And then, to answer, yeah, like we do have clinics that they just have stock. And then we allow, nice. we really encourage the clinics themselves, like the patient advocates and the nurses to, to just be really intentional about the way they just, dis they distribute. Um, so if there is a woman that they, they can see, okay, like she's having a really rough day today. Like yeah. we can maximize the moment you know in yeah. that way i like that um and the goal is to partner with nationwide and then maybe globally cancer centers to have that right. um ability yeah i would love to be able to, to have a partnership with a hospital or cancer center in every state i think that's a it's not an unreasonable goal um, mm -mm. I, think, I don't think it is i don't think so it's just you know it takes it takes time and resources is really what it yeah. takes um because they're the people are out there that need it you know they need hope yeah oh yeah and then we need to, to build towards helping them get it. Yeah. Um, I had a question and then it went away. I'm hoping it'll come back. Um, oh, the walk. The breast cancer month, which yeah. is October. Um, and then the 51 miles. So what is the 51 miles? Yeah. Kind of for? So we set up a virtual walk uh, for the mm -hmm. month of October. And part of the reason why we did that is we have, you know, we have people that that really love what we're doing at the Nightbird Foundation, but they live everywhere. You know, I've got mm -hmm. them in, in South Africa and in Germany and in the Philippines and in Australia and the UK and, you know, Canada. And so when we think about putting together fundraisers, it's really difficult to, mm -hmm. to try to 
pull everybody in to what we're yeah. doing. So a virtual walk is a really like low bar of entry uh, way for, for people to be able to, number one, it's just good for you to get outside and walk. Um, yeah, for sure. Like it's, it's, it allows you to be able to, to raise money around a cause that you're really passionate about in a way that's not like really high impact for the donor either. Yeah. Yeah. So we're asking people to walk, you know, 51 miles for the month of, uh, for the month of October and just put teams together. And Mm -hmm. we're trying to see for every team, we're trying to see if every team will, will raise a hundred dollars for, to sponsor a gift of hope. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, so it's similar to like, you know, you when you run a 5k, you have people that will yeah. donate for you in particular. Uh, yeah. so it's a similar concept and you're, and you're able to do that, uh, re- anywhere, which has been really cool to see a kind of a, you know, people from all over the country and even all over the world walking, yeah. you know, to raise, yeah. on, you know, uh, to be able to, to help some women. I got, yeah, I've got my kids involved. So I walk a mile, my goal. I'm walking two every day, but my goal is to walk a mile with them and then a mile by myself. But sometimes my youngest will join me um, on both miles and complain most of them because she's eight. Um, she's, it's been really neat to like, you know, we are people who get outside and go hiking and spend time in the sun because it is a very free benefit to us. Um, and so it's been nice, you know, just like taking a snapshot of my two mile little ring and be like, hey, don't forget, walk two miles today. Um, I'm sure follow me on Instagram. We're like, get off, stop posting this. No, <laughs> but I won't until November first. Until November first. That's right. Yeah. yeah, it's it's been good for us. It's been good for our community too. It's nice to have something to rally around and yeah. and and again, I, I it's it's nice to be able to bring all of the people that mm-hmm. you know care about Jane and her message and and what she stands for. And be able to bring them into what we're doing instead of, hey, Leslie, like we're throwing a fundraiser in Ohio. I know that you don't live here, but like, could you, you like, just like, yeah, you know, it's a little less meaningful that way. But being yeah. able to people and also mm-hmm. to other people like you have friends, I'm sure that, you know, are now aware of the Nightbird Foundation just because you're saying, hey, I'm walking. Would you be willing to donate five bucks or, you yeah. know, a dollar a mile or whatever, you know, whatever they decide to do. Um, so it's helpful for us that way yeah it's been really fun like just doing it um and it's been really easy put it like i don't know how to track the miles yet i need to ask you about that later but that's all right i'm doing it i'm taking screenshots of my tracker every day so i'm like i'm doing it um but yeah it's been really beneficial to like be outside and you know sometimes i think about you know like jane's hope and her story and other times i'm just like off in my own world and I think that's been cool too, to be able to, you know, have that time where you're just like, it's designated time to put your mind somewhere. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else about Jane or your family or America's Got Talent or anything, Nightbird Foundation, that you want to be sure to tell us um, Uh, before we get off? I don't think so. I mean, one, I just want to say thanks for reaching out and doing this. I'm so glad you emailed back. Yeah, I love, I just love chatting. I love chatting about Jane and being able to talk about her faith and being able to talk about what we're doing. It's uh, it's really meaningful work for me. So thank yeah. you for on that. Um, yeah, just, I think they, yeah, just the gifts of hope. I mean, if you mm-hmm. have people in your life that, and, and even if, in, I don't know, I probably shouldn't say this on a podcast, but it's going out into the world, but like, you know, I've had people nominate women that don't have cancer, mm-hmm. you know, that are, that but are, that are like, they've gone through a divorce and they need something like that, um, that, that they need hope. Like, I'm not going to say no to those. Yeah. So like, yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I'm, I'm wrapping it up. Just run up, run upstairs and charge. Um, so there's, I would say the gift of hope side of things would be incredible. And then also, um, just her poetry book just came out. Um, so if, if you're interested yeah. in writing, right. Or is it out? Um, it is out for pre-order so you can get online right now you can order okay. it if in november um, okay so that's another piece of it there too and and the proceeds from the book obviously go directly into the foundation's mm-hmm. uh, you know bucket for the gift of hope and it's uh it's really encouraging to be able to see people not only just you know not only buy the book because they care about the cause but 
you know, to be able to be even ministered to and, and encouraged by the words uh, of her poetry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I yeah. I think that's it's awesome. Website. Um, uh, I need to throw the walk on the website. I don't know if it's on the website. I'll do that if it's not. Okay. Already. I'm sure that I it, think is. it is. I think it is. Yeah. I think it is, but um, yeah. So this is why I've been walking two miles, everyone, every day. Um, and it's been super beneficial to talk to you guys and then um, Google the Golden Buzzer, Nightbird, America's Got Talent, and watch a video. I think it's like seven and a half minutes. Um, it's really well done. Like, very, very well done. Um, Mitch, thank you so much for your time and sharing your sister with us and kind of what she meant to you guys. Um, I'm going to stop recording now. Bye, y'all.